All right. Hey, guys. Good morning, everybody. Um, hold on. Give me one second. Sorry about that. Um, so today is going to be our second and last day doing Punnett squares. Um, I know during the regular school year, we spend a lot of time on this, but I want to be sure that we have time for other things, too. And I know that this is not the most exciting topic. So today's going to be our last day doing this. Um, and my goal is I'm going to do a little bit of review of what you guys did yesterday. And then we're going to move on and just um, one or two sort of special cases. We're not going to get too deep into the special cases um, just due to, the, due to the time that we have. So the whole idea that you guys should have got out of yesterday, um, and I know the video wasn't made by me, is we're looking at predictions of what kind of traits offspring should have. Um, and so remember, if we're talking about offspring, we're talking about um, egg cells coming from mom, right, with some DNA um, combining with a sperm cell from dad that also has some DNA. And we're looking at what DNA does the child have, right? And again, we're looking at just one certain trait at a time. You have three billion letters in your DNA. We're just looking at one trait or one section of a few letters and looking at what traits you might have. Um, and just remember, these are all predictions. So sometimes we might say like it's a 50-50 chance or 75-25%. Um, but just remember in real life, we don't always go exactly at those percentages um, because, you know, this probability. So we're looking at what the percent chance is and just remember, in real life, it might be a little bit different from that prediction. So yesterday, um, just a couple of words I want to review. I know a lot of vocab was thrown at you guys yesterday. Um, but one of the things that you guys learned was homozygous versus heterozygous. And that is something that's going to come up again today. Um, but if you break down these words, homo means same. Um, and if you think about... Um, oops, where'd my mouse go? Hold on, guys. Sorry. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Okay. For some reason, my mouse disappeared. So homo means same, right? So um, I know a lot of students think about homosexual, right? Meaning that you like somebody of the same gender. But homo just by itself means same. Oh, God, I'm so sorry about how that wrote. Um, and zygous means code. So if you're homozygous, you have the same code. The two letters that you have look the same. So they would both be dominant or uppercase, or they would both be recessive or lowercase. Um, heterozygous is very similar, right? We're talking about a different code. So you might have one dominant um, and one recessive. So if we want to look at our examples that are homozygous, um, we might have big G, big G be homozygous, little j, little j, little u, little u, little f, little f, right? Because those are all the same that go together. Um, and if it's not clear to you guys, you should have done those top two practice questions on the paper. I'm actually just going over them now. So if you want to go back and check your work, you're more than welcome to. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Right. So if those are all homozygous, that means everything that's left would be heterozygous. And you can tell the difference because they have one uppercase and one lowercase, meaning they have um, one of each version of that gene, of that trait. So I just want to go over one Punnett square example. You guys did a lot of them yesterday, um, but I just want to be sure we're on the same page before we move on, just so that people don't get lost. Um, so in house cats, having a long tail is dominant over having a short tail. So if two cats are heterozygous, meaning they both are big T, little t, um, they have kittens together. All right, so we're going to draw a square. Oh, that's not where I thought my square would end up. That's okay. So if we're drawing our square, it says both parents are heterozygous. So one parent would contribute um, egg cells with big T and little t. All right, and then the other parent would contribute sperm cells that could either have the long version tail trait or the short version tail trait. All right, so remember when we're putting together um, our squares, say I'm doing this top left square here, we're looking at what kind of outside cells intersect that. So you get a big T from the top right here going down. And you would also get this big T right here coming over from the left side. Um, but judging by the work that I've seen so far, it seems like people remember this. Uh, 
And I'm trying to make my little T's look different just so that we can keep track a little bit more easily. All right. So just the tricky part is for a lot of people, not so much filling out the square, but interpreting the square. So if we're looking at our square, we know long tail is dominant. We underline that in the question. Um, and what that means is that if they have any big T's, even just one, um, they would have a long tail. So if we're going to circle which ones have a long tail, big T, big T, that kitten, that baby cat would have a long tail. Big T, little T, right? Remember, even though it has one little T, it's covered up by that dominant trait. So if you were actually looking at that cat um, and not their DNA, just the at the cat right in front of you, you would see that that cat had a long tail. Um, and same with this one, right? This last square here, the little t, little t, they don't have any of those dominant traits, right? So they would have a short tail. So we can say that three out of four chances, right? A three fourths or 75% chance are gonna have a long tail. And then one quarter of them are gonna be short or 25%. Um, this has come up before in, in other classes and on tests, um, but sometimes I might actually give you a number of kittens, right? So if they have eight cats, right, if they have eight babies, how many would you expect to have short tails, right? So if three quarters are long, that means ooh, one quarter are short, right? And if we're thinking about what's a quarter of eight, that would be two, right? Two cats, because one out of four is the same as two out of eight. So we would say your answer for part B would be two cats. Oh my goodness, my writing is horrendous. I am so sorry. But two cats, that says cats, would have short tails. All right. So now that we've checked our work, this is gonna kind of be the new lesson part. Um, and we are gonna do the notes together and a couple of example problems. And then at the very end, I'm going to give you guys a case study that you guys are going to read and do on your own. Um, so we're going to be talking about incomplete dominance and co-dominance today. I kind of like to call these the special situations. So what we did yesterday was how most things work, how most traits work. But genetics can get really, really complicated. And there's a lot of situations where things behave a little bit differently than we might expect. Um, and last year, there's tons of these. So last year, you might have talked about um, sex, sex link traits. You might have talked about polygenics, where things are more than one gene, so you'd have more than two letters. Um, we're not going to worry about too many of the really complicated special situations, but I do want to introduce you guys to these two. Um, so remember, if a trait is dominant um, and eye color gets complicated, this is a very simplified example, right? There's obviously more than two eye colors. Um, but if a trait is dominant, generally that would mean that it's covering up another trait. It's covering up the recessive um, version. So um, brown eyes and blue eyes are kind of an easy example um, to think about, although in real life, obviously, there's more than two options. But um, brown eyes typically will cover up the blue eye trait. Today, we're going to be talking about examples where this idea of a dominant trait gets a little bit um, blurry and it gets a little complicated. So when it means that somebody's in heterozygous, we kind of touched on this already, already, but it means they have both versions of that trait. So maybe they have the dominant um, version coming from one parent in their DNA, but they also have some DNA that has the recessive trait that comes from their other parent. Um, today, these two special situations are going to be affecting a person who is heterozygous. Um, so this is part of your notes right here, but this first special situation we're going to talk about is incomplete dominance. So sometimes um, instead of having one trait be dominant over the other, right, like brown eyes being dominant over blue eyes, we might actually see some traits that blend together instead of covering each other up. So my example would be um, a white flower and a red flower being mixed and having pink flower babies, right? The white's not really covering up the red. The red's not really covering up the white either, right? Those two traits are sort of mixed together. Um, so I think of incomplete dominance like you put the two traits in a blender and they're mixed together. That's how I like to think about it. And honestly, the Punnett squares are pretty much the same as you've been doing. 
Um, except sometimes you might see people using two letters. Um, don't freak out if you see two different letters being used. You're still going to figure out the problem the exact same way. So we're talking about some plants called snapdragons. Um, and they make flowers that can be red, which we write with RR, white, which we might write with WW, or pink, which we would write as red and white, right? Because it's those two things mixed together. So we're going to draw a square with an example of a white flower reproducing with a red flower. And the nice thing about this problem is it gives you the letters already, right? So it says a white flower, which we know is WW. And the other parent is a red flower, which we know would be RR. And if you switch, like if you have your R's on the top and your W's on the side, that is absolutely fine. Um, that will not mess with your answer. So we're going to fill it in, right? This W is going to go down into these two boxes. This W is going to go down into these two boxes. And we're going to do our R's across, right? And you can probably see already they're all going to be RW. All right, so if we're looking at our percentages, right? So doing the square, remember, is just a part of it. The biggest part is actually interpreting it and seeing what that means. Um, so if we're looking at RW, if we look back at our key for the question, it says that RW makes pink flowers, right? So all of our boxes are RW, so that would be 100%. So 100% are gonna be pink. And I'm not going to write out the other two just because my writing is horrendous, but that would mean 0% red, 0% white. They all had that mixed trait together. All right, so again, very similar to what we did yesterday, but just we have this third option, right? It's not just red or white. We can now have this third option. That's the only difference. So there's a second special situation, and honestly, it works pretty much the same as the first one. Uh, with incomplete dominance that our first question was showing, we had the traits blend together, right? In codominance, it works the same way, but instead of the two traits being blended together, you actually see both traits separately at the same time. So neither one is covering each other up. Um, they're not blending together. They're just both present at the same time. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever spent time around chickens, but you can have white chickens and black chickens make babies that have kind of, they're white and black, they have spots of both. So that's actually gonna be the example we go with today. All right, so we have, um, I just don't know what color. So we have black chickens and white chickens can have black and white spotted babies. So I'm gonna start assigning some letters. You can use whatever letters you want, but I kind of like to have my letters go along with the traits so that's easier to remember. So I might say that black chickens are big B, big B, right? Because that way I can remember B for black. We can also have white chickens. So I'm going to use WW for that. And they can have babies that have black and white spots. So that would be my example where we have one of each letter. So we have a B and a W for that. All right, so we're just breaking down the word problem. Um, and it says a spotted chicken, right? And we said that a chicken with spots would be BW. And also a white chicken, so that would be WW, have babies. And we want to know what their babies would look like. So we're going to draw our square. And I know the tables look a little bit different on the handouts I give you. It's hard to kind of make tables that look like this in Word. So um, just try your best when you're typing it in on there. So we have one chicken that's spot with B and W. And remember, we're always separating those letters and putting one letter on top of each box. Then we have our other chicken parent that is all white, so it would be WW. And then we're going to fill in those boxes. All 
All right. So now we're going to see, we're going to write down our answer, right? Because we always have to interpret our square. So let's start. So if we're looking, let's go through each of the possibilities. So our first possibility would be a black chicken with big B, big B, right? And if we look at our square, we don't have any of those. So that would be 0% of the chickens will be black. I'm just going to say, I guess I'll write it all the way out. Our next option is a white chicken, WW, right? Half of our boxes, two of the four, have WW in them. Um, so we would say 50% for half. And finally, we have B and W for spotted. The other half of our boxes, two of the four have spots. So that would be another 50%. Sorry, that was my dog sneezing in the background. You okay, buddy? He's just looking at me like he's gonna sneeze again. Okay, so 50% spots. Sorry, I got distracted. All right, um, but hopefully this helps you guys um, I believe the le your only thing that you have left to really do on your own now that we've checked everything else together, um, there's a longer word problem at the bottom I want you guys to read through and try to do that um, question by yourself. Make sure that you do that last part of the explanation because that's worth four points. All right, but otherwise you guys should be all set. Um, make sure that you send your work to me when you're done so you can get credit and let me know if you guys have any questions at all today.